I'm Missy Evans with the Hartzell Chamber and I am here with Ken Doss who is running for election to seat number five for the city council. I guess we call it place actually. Yes. So it's place number five with the city council. And Ken has had some experience serving with the city council before. So this, while he is not the incumbent, he is coming back to for um, another term um, and we're excited to hear from Ken and about some of the things that are near and dear to his heart during this election cycle. So Ken, thank you for being here. And um, what we're gonna do right now is just give everyone a chance to maybe get to know you a little bit more. So we're gonna just start out with the easy question, which is why are you running for city council? And you know, to add to that, if you're elected, what are gonna be some of your priorities? Okay, I'm, uh, <clears throat> I've uh, been obviously living in Harsel for uh, 38 years. <laughs> and uh, so I have, a, I have a good good background in the, in the, uh, in the city. I'm retired. I've uh, been retired since uh, 2010 and uh, had an opportunity to uh, uh, do a lot of things in, in retirement. Uh, but now I'm, I'm, uh, I'm wanting to continue to uh, uh, use some of the skills that I have to help the, the city wherever I possibly can. I've got a, a lot of business background. I got over 40 years experience in business. Mm -hmm. um, I've, uh, uh, I've got degrees in uh, accounting, economics and finance. Uh, I've got a master's in business administration and I have a, uh, I was a certified public accountant. Mm -hmm. And so I have, a, I have a lot of business background. I've also uh, been involved uh, with, the, with the city. I've, uh, I've been with the city and um, uh, on, the, on the board of zoning adjustments. I spent time on there. I spent time on the personnel board in the city and I've been on the um, a planning commission for 13 years and I st I'm still on the planning commission so mm -hmm. um, so I get I, I've, I've got a lot of uh, insight into into government uh, into Hartzell's government and uh, um, so I'm um, look I'm excited about uh, the opportunity of, of maybe getting a, another chance if you, if you folks uh, uh, allow me to do that <laughs> so. yes and so you know to follow up with that um, is there a particular issue nowadays that's maybe motivating you to, to step back in and, and into the race um, and give you a chance to serve again on the city council? Yeah, I'm, uh, we have, we've grown, Hartzell has grown so much. Um, I know the, the last census was over 14,000 uh, in population, but this census, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be even much, much higher than that, I, I feel. Uh, we're, we're growing and we're feeling that growth. We're feeling the growth in, in infrastructure primarily. I think, uh, I think when it comes to traffic, uh, you can see Main Street every day. It's just backed up <laughs> continuously. You can hear it yes, during our interview too. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and on uh, 31 is just a, is, is, a real, is a real nightmare when it comes to traffic in the evenings and in the mornings. And I think we got to look at some things there to uh, improve COVID because we've got some unsafe conditions. Uh, turn, U-turn, Al Dot's uh, uh, kind of created situation where they're, um, we're, we're doing U-turns, especially if you want to go to KFC now, you can, any, anybody here can uh, experience that when you're sitting in the middle of the road and there's somebody <laughs> barreling down on you and you're, you're hoping that they, that they see that you're stopped uh, there. So that's one of the issues. The other issue that I, I, I think that we, we really need to focus. We've got a lot of property in town that is being uh, impeded by the lack of, uh, by, by flooding, mm -hmm. the, the, the flood zones that we've had. Uh, we had, when, when I was on the council, the first time we, we had, came up with a three-phased plan for flood mitigation and the city mitigation, sorry. Mm -hmm. And uh, one, one of those uh, plans is already in place. That's, that's uh, a, uh, water retention that's behind the uh, Board of Education building and they have currently bought uh, some property next to the railroad tracks that's go also going to be holding back water that hopefully is going to eliminate the flood zone downtown mm. which is a which is a big deal for a lot of the, the businesses owners down there that used to get flooded every time we got a, a 
heavy rain, but I'm hoping that this is actually going to change the flood map, mm, wow. which would which would inc increase property values, I think, down there uh, significantly. The uh, the third phase was to do something on Main Street, uh, north of um, of some of the businesses on the on the east side of Main Street that have can, can, where we we've, we've had. Uh, people looking to develop property there and have backed out because of the cost mm -hmm. of, of, man, of uh, trying to eliminate the flood problem. So, mm -hmm. so we, have, we have those issues. And um, so infrastructure is my number one. Yes. Of course, my accounting background, I'm always looking for uh, opportunities in, in government to see if there's ways to eliminate waste, do things different, do things uh, smarter. Um, uh, we've we've had some opportunities in the past to do that, and uh, so. Uh, but yeah. those are the those, those are, are some of the focus areas. Those are some pretty big areas. Right, right. <laughs> and, and really, and, and I will and I will say, education and police <laughs> are are some are my uh, number one uh, priorities too yes, in our city. Yes. So those are very important to me. And, and but you know they really but, uh, speak to the the heart of what the city council exists. To do yes. so that's uh, really important um, just help everybody know in your background what are some of the civic organizations and um, other community activities that you have been a part of okay. um, just so that we know that what your involvement has been okay well going way back I've been on Kiwanis and, and <laughs> a lot of, lot of groups like that but uh, I'm a past uh, president of the Chamber of Commerce uh -huh. uh, 97 I was I was the, uh, the president and I was on the I was a director for eight years I guess yes, two terms wow. okay two, mm -hmm. two solid terms so uh, so I've had had the opportunity to to try and be involved in in, uh, in uh, the civic uh, functions in our, in our city and try to try to support where where uh, wherever I could yes very good mm -hmm. you know as you and I both know that that's really where you get to know the heart and the, the soul of the community is in those yes. civic um, activities. Yes. So um, we're gonna shift a little bit sure. and let you speak and maybe even educate the community a little bit on uh, civic governance. Mm -hmm. um, and as I've said in a lot of the other videos, that word might sound a little intimidating or maybe not be real familiar. It's one of those, you know, 25 cent words or something that, um, but you know, that really just means Governing it, it means uh, you know taking care of what needs to be taken care of so that uh, you know setting the rules in place setting the policies in place so that um, things run smoothly. Um, so what do you see is the primary work of the city council? Why does the city council exist and what's their primary work? The, to me, the primary work is to is to um, listen to the community. Um, and to uh, govern uh, in such a way that you, that as me as a councilman, if I've got people who have issues or problems, I want to address those problems with the, um, with the city government. Um, we have a great staff that manages our city. They do, they do a great job. Um, and, and we want, we want, we want good people doing that too, but we can't forget that they work for the people of Hartson. Mm -hmm. That's right. And they're they're there to make sure that the lives of, of, of our citizens are uh, as as best as they can be under the given the cost and, and the constraints that we that we uh, operate under. So, you know, I think I think the, the first thing is is. We have to listen to the citizens on everything that uh, is uh, comes up. I think uh, government has to uh, has to react to to uh, what best what best fits the needs of each of those citizens. Uh, in other words, if there are certain things that we have we we are we are doing, and if we're doing it for reasons that aren't bettering uh, the citizens, then we need to question. Mm -hmm. uh, and that happens when you get people involved mm -hmm. in, in anything. Mm -hmm. 
know, whatever it is, people people are people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, whether they're in church or they're in uh, they're in government, that's right. you have to you have to uh, manage sometimes what they their own personal uh, needs sometimes <laughs> outweigh or agendas. Yes, agenda, uh, they, some people have agendas. Yes, you're right. Uh -huh. So, mm -hmm. so, uh, uh, but first and foremost, listen to the citizens of Arsenal and do what addresses their needs. Um, I'm um, I know I personally I don't I don't have any any uh, properties or I'm, I'm not on, I'm not running for for government to feather my own nest yes. I don't have a I don't have a business I'm trying to uh, promote or uh, or or some uh, agenda mm -hmm. that I that I have in place I'm just here if, if the people of Hartzell uh, have an issue or a problem I want to address that yes that's good and um, you know being on the city council, it's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> um, you will have to render decisions that are not necessarily favorable, or you're going to have to implement policies and programs that can be somewhat difficult or you know controversial. So, uh, speaking about perhaps your past experience and looking into the future, if you were to be elected. Are you willing to take on the responsibility of making decisions that are in the best interest of the public, even though they could be somewhat controversial or even, you know, possibly even against your own um, personal desires? Um, I think you have to you have to weigh every decision uh, based on what's good for our community now uh, not something that's morally wrong decisions are not good for our community mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, 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 and, and sometimes making decisions that are uh, good for our citizens that maybe the citizens don't necessarily like yes. sometimes you just have to make those decisions yes. and and uh, Notice that you have to take some flack sometime, and, and I know uh, there was uh, going way back uh, uh, when I was on the council. We had the opportunity. We had a uh, we had to we, we had a cost savings opportunity where we could we could eliminate uh, a jail. Mm. We didn't have anybody in the jail, uh, but uh, but we had uh, at one time Falwell was sending somebody up in. We had some people. Uh, but by doing that, we were able to save quite a bit of money to, for the citizens of Hartsville, and it also helped to pay for some pay for some pay, pay, pay raises for uh, some of our employees. Um, it wasn't an easy decision because a lot of people didn't like that yes, decision. Yes, sure. Yes. Uh, because uh, I mean, I heard comments that you know, without a jail, you don't have a town, hmm. you know, which is you know, uh, that's a perspective. And, uh, but I think that's what you you have to make uh, decisions that are, are what makes sense for the citizens and uh, uh, some people who, who may have uh, a different perspective or that may be led by an agenda you just have to uh, um, take the heat mm -hmm. that's right that's right that's, and it's not easy or fun but it's what it's what good governors do right. Right. <laughs> Um, so let's shift a little bit and talk about some of the issues that someone in the city council might be facing. Um, you know, you've talked a lot about Hartzell and its growth, and I think anyone that has been in Hartzell, we, I've only personally been here for a couple of years, not even about 18 months or so, and have seen a significant change than when I first was introduced to Hartzell over 30 years ago. So um, let's talk a little bit about that. Um, do you think our main street, our downtown area here, which is really the identity of Hartzell, do you think that it's healthy and successful? And why or why not? I think I think Main Street Main Street downtown is is healthier. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it could be even healthier. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying that uh, we, we we still have some some vacant buildings, but I think uh, I think we're on the right track um, 
And I think the more, uh, one of the biggest problems we had downtown before was the lack of what I call stir. Mm -hmm. we, we didn't have a lot of activity. Now the, the uh, church coming down here has helped, mm -hmm. has helped some of that. Just creating activity downtown. The the uh, uh, some of the restaurants that have opened up uh, has has uh, helped a lot. Uh, some of the boutiques are benefiting from some of that too, I think. Uh, and we have some really good uh, good shops downtown yes, that do. uh, that uh, people really need to take advantage of. Uh, but the uh, I think I think downtown has a has a, a ways to go. I think what we we really want to make sure that we get our 31 quarter healthy. Very good, very uh, good. Yeah. And that, that dovetails beautifully into a question that we did have come from the community. Um, and this question is, what is your vision, you know, apart from just downtown, but what's your vision or plan for revitalizing all of Heart Soul? Um, downtown and the 31 corridor and as one candidate also brought up the 65 corridor we also have you know two heart soul exits that uh, can be an attractor for people coming off the interstate so that it is more economically and physically attractive for current and prospective residents I think uh, we Thompson Road is a tough is a tough sell right now because it seems to have kind of gone light manufacturing mm -hmm. and if, if we can develop the industrial park over there. There's an opportunity over there and a few pieces of property, but there's not a whole lot available unless we can develop down Thompson Road mm -hmm. uh, a little ways. Uh, 65 and uh, 36 uh, still has some growth opportunities. Mm -hmm. we, got some, we got some opportunity there. We need to be recruiting more businesses down there uh, but I also think I also think that we need to look out further than that too I think one of the things that, that may we we may want to try and plan for is a third uh, opportunity and that's the Bethel Road hmm. overpass hmm. I think if we could get traffic on, inbound uh, coming in there and exiting there you may have an opportunity of a whole lot more land hmm. to develop there and there's, if you've ever driven out that way, there's a lot of land mm -hmm. there is beautiful. in that area. Beautiful development, uh, developable property. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen in the next uh, three or five years. Sure. But you need to plan for that. Yes. And I'm a firm believer in planning, planning out, planning out anywhere from 10 to 20 years mm -hmm. and thinking about, is that what you would like to have? Mm -hmm. Is that you, what you would like to for Hartsel to develop in the long term. And being strategic about that. Right, mm -hmm. Bethel Road can be a, uh, a nice developable property. I know a lot of people live out there too, mm -hmm. but but, mm -hmm. it, but to me it's also, a, it has an opportunity to develop out there. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. so uh, how do you plan to involve residents in the decision-making process of our town? Well, I would like to have a, uh, a direct dialogue through social media mm -hmm. and I will admit to you that I'm, I'm a little bit of a novice <laughs> to social media but I'm getting better uh -huh. I've actually developed my own little website ah, now, so, so with that website I'm hoping that uh, as I'm as I'm running I will be able to have a dialogue there with with the people who have questions uh, or concerns or things that come up we have a we have kind of a problem you know we we I'm in place five. Mm -hmm. I'm running in place five, but you know I run citywide. Mm -hmm. So in a lot of cases, you find that there's one or two councilmen that get a lot of questions, and then some of us we don't get a whole lot of lot mm -hmm. of uh, feedback from from uh, uh, people. And I want to be there for anybody mm -hmm. that that has a question or a concern, and I want to try and. and help them whatever it is yes whether it's my garbage can got knocked over or it's something more pertinent to uh, flood issues mm -hmm. or drainage mm -hmm. or you know whatever's going on. yes so. that's good okay um, okay this is a fun question um, if elected what steps would you take to put our city on firmer financial footing mm -hmm. well like I say my, my backgrounds in accounting <laughs> Uh, I spent uh, uh, probably about 10 years as an internal auditor. Mm. 
So from my perspective, I think one of the things that you can look at is to, is to look at various departments, and I like to do that around budget time, um, and, and ask those department heads, what could we do different to cut cost? Uh, and I think there are always things that you can look at or you question things, and uh, one of my one of my favorite uh, things as, a, as an auditor was, I can always ask dumb questions. Um, and, and I get feedback from them and I say, okay, okay, well that makes sense. But, but sometimes, sometimes you get a response that doesn't make sense. Uh -huh. And sometimes you say, okay, well, how can we do that different? Yes, uh -huh. you know? yes. Uh, so so I, like to, uh, I like to challenge the, 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 the norm mm -hmm. and see if there's a way to make uh, a better reality. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. that's so good, that's good. Well, we are really about out of time and uh, I wanna make sure I give you plenty of time here at the end to just share what, anything more that's in your mind or you know anything you want to express to the community, but in particular, answer why should you be elected to the city council and what differentiates you from other candidates that are running or maybe even candidates that are presently serving how do you add that diversity to the council well <clears throat> of course I've, I've lived in Hartzell for 38 years I've, uh, between living and working and raising a family a family that uh, that's that's been uh, through our school system that's benefiting now and their living their own careers um, I really think that uh, my background my education my investment in Hartzell itself uh, makes me makes me uh, the best candidate for the for the job um, I think if you would just compare it and I'm, and I'm you know these the, the two young men that are running against me they seem to be nice nice young men, uh, but I really think that I am the best choice uh, of the three candidates, and, that, and all I ask for you to do is to compare, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, very good. Okay. Well, as I've said to so many of the other candidates, I am so thankful that you've been willing to throw your hat into the ring. It's not without great personal expense and time and a lot of emotional energy, but um, your choice to do that makes this whole process healthier and better for Hartzell. Um, and we need to hear your perspective on things. So I'm really appreciative that you were willing to do that. And no matter how it all comes out, um, you are worthy to be um, honored. So thank you very much for that and really appreciate it. Well, and I certainly appreciate the Chamber's involvement in, in uh, tr trying to enlighten the, the community as to, uh, as to the candidates that are running. And I think that's, uh, at that one, it's part of their charter, I think, but also uh, uh, it, sometimes it doesn't get appreciated enough, but I th so thoroughly appreciate our Chamber of Commerce. Well, thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. Mm -hmm.